Hello everyone. Welcome to the second video of Chapter 1 for Computer Science and Math 451, Numerical Computation. In this video, we will go through some representation of numbers in different bases. So, um, historically, um, there have been several bases used for representing numbers in different cultures. So, for example, um, the one we use now for daily purpose, we use 10 as a base, and these are called decimal numbers. And uh, in computers, we also know that it uses 2 as the base for its numbers, and these are called binary numbers. And there has been base 8 being used. And, uh, for example, base 16 was used in ancient China. And surprisingly, but maybe not, um, base 20, the vigesimal number system was used in ancient French. I don't know if you speak French, but if you do, well, at least if you can count in French, you will notice that something strange happens after you come to 60. So 60 in French is 60. And then you count 61, 62, 61, 62, and you count all the way to 69, 69. And then when you want to count 70, it's not 70, it's counted 60, 10, 70, and it keeps going, 60, 11, 60, 12, all the way to 60, 19, 70, 9, for 79. And then when you want to say 80 in French, it is 80, means 420. So clearly they're using base 20 for those numbers. So this actually causes quite some trouble. Say if you want to say 95, you have to think your head. 95 is 4 times 20 plus 15. So 80 comes. Well, how the Frenchman deal with this on a daily basis? Well, it's beyond my king, but they manage. Okay, and also um, for the ancient Babylonians, they used number 60 as the base, so, etc. So through human um, civilization, somehow all these number systems eventually dropped out and then we converge to the decimal system which we're using these days. And now consider a general situation where, um, let's say, the base is just beta. Beta denotes the base. And you have a number in base beta. It's not necessarily a whole number. So it will have two parts. One is the integer part, and the other is the fractional part. And they're separated by a decimal point. So let's say in a general situation, you have a number. And, and let's denote the position, the value of those positions an, an minus 1 all the way down to a1 and a0 as the integer part, and the fraction part is b1, b2, b3 as it's written here, and with base beta. So what is the value of this number? Say, if I want to compute its value in decimal, how would you do it? Well, you would just count the position, the label of these positions where they are, say this a0 here simply takes the value a0. And this a1 would take the value a1 times beta. And so on and so forth, when you get into higher and higher position, let's say position an here, it's actually an times beta to the power n. So if we think beta is 10, in the above expression, we can understand this much better in an easier way. So we see this formula here, this formula we have here, and clearly allows us a way, an algorithm, to convert a number in any basis beta into 
the decimal base. Now this formula above actually allows us to convert a number in any base beta into a decimal base. Now let's practice um, how to convert numbers between different bases. We'll go through some examples, a couple of them. So the first example is a conversion between an octal base to a decimal. So say you have this number 45.12 in octal base and you want to find out its value in decimal. So we simply apply the formula we just learned in the previous slide. So the 4 here will be multiplied by the base 8 to the power 1 and the 5 here is 5 times base to the power 0 which is 1 and then the first decimal place 1 is multiplied by 8 to the negative 1 and the 2 the second decimal place is 2 is multiplied by 8 to the negative 2 and then you just work this out and evaluate it and, and this is what you will get 37.15625 in decimal. Our second example is a conversion between an octal number to a binary number. So before we jump into converting any actual number, let's make some observation. Say you have number 1 in octal base, if you want to write it in binary, it's just 1. And then if you increase the value by 1, so now it's 2, in binary, well, binary can only take numbers 0 and 1, so you can't make this one become 2. What it does is it overflows to the higher position, so it's 1, 0. Okay, and number 3 now becomes 1 and 1. You add one more, and then 4 becomes 1. 1, 0, 0, because if you add one more, it overflows to the higher position. And then so 5 is 1, 0, 1, and 6 is 1, 1, 0, and 7 is 1, 1, 1, and uh, 8. Well, in 8, you can't write 8 in octal base, so you have to write 1, 0. And then this becomes adding 1 on top of that, and then it overflows, and it becomes 1, 0, 0, 0. So I want, to make, I want you to make an observation. So in particular, this number in octal base into binary, what happens? Well, the zero here just changes into these three zeros. And the one it becomes this one, which is the same case as we have here. One changes into one. So this happens exactly because eight now is a power of 2, so we know 8 is 2 to the power 3. Okay, with this observation in hand, now it becomes very easy to convert an octal to a binary. So, say for example, we have this number 5034 in octal, how does it look like in binary? Well, we could just go through each number. So we see 5, 0, 4, 3, 4, so for 5, into binary, it will be 101, and 0, it will be 000. zero, zero. So make sure you convert each number and let it occupy three places. And if it, if it has only one value or less, then you just fill it with 0 in the front and make sure it takes three places. So number 3 becomes 011, one, one, and number 4 becomes 100. Zero, zero. And that is the binary number for this octal number. And now, if you want to convert a binary number into an octal number, it becomes equally simple. So, you could group all these numbers into groups of 3, right? Because, um, I mean, 2 to the power 3 is 8. So, you group into 3. One, it's 1 to 3 group and 1, 2, 3, another group, and 1, 2, 3, another group, and 1, 2, 3, another group. And then in each group, you look at those three digits binary numbers and write out their values 
in octave base. So for example, 0, 0, 001 gives me 1, 1, 1, 1 gives me 7, 0, 1, 0 gives me 2, 1, 1, 0 gives me 6. So this number in binary becomes 6, 2, 7, 1 in octave. Okay, so keep in mind this manipulation, this algorithm is possible because 8 is a power of 2. So 8 is 2 to the power 3. If it is not in exact power, and you cannot use this method. Okay. Now we look into an example that is um, more interesting. Say, I want to convert a decimal number into a binary number. So let's take this simple, innocent-looking number, 12.45 in decimal, and we want to write it in binary. So this, tem and this example is of particular interest. Why? Well, since the computer uses binary base, so if you have a number 12.45, 12 and you want to do something to it, you will give it to the computer. So what does the computer do? Well, it will have to convert it into a binary number, right? So how does it look like as a binary number? So actually, this conversion takes two steps. So the integer part and the fractional part, they are treated differently. So first, let's treat the integer part and convert just this 12 in decimal into binary number. Okay. So the procedure now um, will be the following. So what do you do? You put 12 here, and then you just keep divided by 2. So you do 12 divided by 2, and you get 6 and the remainder 0. So write the remainder here. Those remainders are important. And now you have 6, you divide it by 2, and you get 3, remainder 1. So keep the remainder. Now you have 3, you divide it by 2, you get 1, and you get remainder 1. And then you have 1, you divide it by 2, and you get 0, and you get remainder 1. So then you stop, because it's 0, there's nothing more to do. And your binary number will be actually collecting these remainders in the reversed order. So the number will actually be 1, 1, 0, 0. You go backwards. So 12 in decimal becomes 1, 1, 0, 0 in binary. Now we convert the fractional part into binary. So 0 0.45, a decimal number, we'll write it into a binary. So this procedure is um, kind of a similar but uh, kind of an inverse one from the integer part. So now instead of um, divided by 2, now we multiply it by 2. So how do you do that? So what you do is you take the fraction part, fractional part of the number, here 0 0.45, you multiply it by 2. And then you keep track of the integer part. Okay, so let's see. 0 0.45 times 2, you get 0 0.9. So the integer part is 0, the decimal part is 0.9. And then you multiply it by 2, the decimal part, 0 0.9, which gives you 1.8. Okay, so you get integer part 1. And now you multiply 0 0.8 by 2, which gives you 1.6. And, and you keep and you keep the 1, you mark it, and the next step will be 0 0.6 times 2, which give you 1.2. Okay? And then the next step will be 0 0.2 times 2 is 0 0.4, and 0 0.4 times 2 is 0 0.8, 0 0.8 times 2 is 1.6. And now your binary number will be exactly collecting the integer part in the order as you compute it. So it will be 0 0.011101 as I 
wrote here, here I wrote a couple more places. Okay, so keep in your mind it's collected in the same order as you compute. Okay. I want to call your attention to the fact that, as you can observe, if you keep multiplying the decimal place by 2, this procedure will never end. What does it mean? Well, it means 0 0.45 in decimal, if you write it in binary, it becomes a non-terminating fractional part number. Okay? Now we can put these two parts together and uh, write out 12.45 in decimal now becomes this number in binary. So, it might come as a surprise to you that a simple, finite length, nice-looking decimal number such as 12.45 in a computer, it could actually cause a lot of trouble because it has infinite, infinite length of fractional part. Mm -hmm. So, you might be wondering, how does a computer store such a number? Well, if you throw this number to the computer and say store it exactly, the computer would crash because it would demand infinite amount of memory space, right? So what can a computer do if it has to store this number? Well, this will come in the next video.